Do you ever feel sick and think it's the flu? Well, my next guest had exactly that feeling, but the next day wound up hospitalized. She later learned she had contracted meningitis. Now, in order to save her life, doctors had to amputate her legs below the knee and her fingers. Now, some of the images may be disturbing. Here's Jamie's remarkable story. When I was 20 years old, I was attending my dream university. One night, came down with flu-like symptoms. I was cold, shivering to the bone. The next morning, I was so weak, I could barely walk. I needed to go to the hospital. I had no idea that would have been the last time I walked with my natural born legs. The nurse in the emergency room suspected what was later confirmed, that I contracted meningitis. As a mom, it was the hardest thing watching her fight for her life. I saw my limbs go from red to purple to black to literally rotting. All of my fingers and legs below the knees were amputated to help stop the spread of the disease. While Jamie may be missing limbs, I'm certainly fortunate to have my daughter here with me today. Usually people pick up things that they're opening, but I have to use surfaces to help me open it. Learning things a new way actually made me this really determined, adaptive person. All of my earrings are hooks because it's the only type of jewelry I can put in by myself. Today, I'm a woman living life to the fullest, and I found love along the way. I feel that the best is yet to come. Well, Jamie joins me along with Dr. Lynn Friedland, pediatrician and vaccine research scientist at pharmaceutical company GSK, who we're partnering with today. Now, also joining us in the audience is Jamie's mother, Patsy. So welcome. Glad you have you here. Uh, now, Jamie, Jamie, had you ever heard of meningitis before your diagnosis? No, it was the scariest experience. Now, we saw how the disease turned your limbs black. What were you feeling at that point? An excruciating amount of pain. And I felt like I had thousands of pounds of sand on me. After two months of being in the hospital, the doctor started to talk about amputations. Wow. And they decided to amputate my limbs to help stop the spread of the disease. Wow. So Patsy, as a mother, how did you handle Jamie's diagnosis? Had to be shocking. Well, I was shocked and it was pretty devastating. Jamie's my young, vibrant, healthy child. Yeah, so Dr. Friedland, talk about what meningitis really is. Jamie had invasive meningococcal disease, commonly referred to as meningitis. It can cause uh, inflammation of the protective membranes that surround the brain and the spinal cord can also cause blood poisoning with sepsis. Now there are five vaccine preventable groups, A, C, W, Y, and B. Early symptoms can be similar to a mild case of the flu, but as we saw with Jamie, this can progress very rapidly. Meningitis is uncommon, but it's potentially fatal. Right. One in 10 will die, sometimes within 24 hours, and of those who survive, one in five suffer long-term consequences such as loss of limbs like Jamie. So who is most at risk of being infected? Well, anybody can get meningitis, but teenagers and young adults have higher rates of infection with meningitis group B. For college students, there are increased risks. That includes living in close quarters, sharing things like food and drinks, and kissing. In fact, from 2011 through March of this year, Meningitis B caused all U.S. college meningococcal outbreaks, and that involved 13 college campuses, 50 cases, two deaths, oh, wow. among an at-risk population of about 253,000 students. So, Doctor, what can parents do to help protect their teens and young adults? What parents can do is they can speak to their teen's doctor and ask about the two different types of vaccines that are available and needed to help protect against vaccine-preventable meningitis due to groups A, C, W, Y, and B before their teenager heads off to college. Now, vaccination may not protect everybody, but it can help save lives. Jamie, you not only survived meningitis, you have a whole new life path. 
with my mother, we are GSK spokespeople and we're advocates for the meningitis vaccines. We want to help other families avoid this. After my amputations, I wasn't even sure if I was going to walk again. Yeah. But not only are you walking again, but you also went on to become a competitive cyclist, right? I did, and I have a gold medal to prove it. Well, congratulations on that. This is amazing. Parents, I just have to say, it is imperative that you take this very, very seriously. Get educated about meningitis vaccinations. And a great place to start is at meningitisb.com and talk to your teen's doctor about the two different types of meningitis vaccines. It's really important that you ask these questions. This doesn't just happen to other people. Take the precautions.